The Thing About Cars, a podcast for car enthusiasts and the people who love them. Hello, my friends. This is Mickey Desai. Welcome to this really quick bonus episode of The Thing About Cars. We are doing a little bit of housekeeping, taking a really short hiatus to get our heads together around what we're going to do with The Thing About Cars for the remainder of about 2021 and getting ready for 2022. There's a lot of good stuff for us to discuss, but today I'm here to ask you for your help uh, as we take this little break and do some strategizing. We could use your suggestions for guests, for special guests who join us on the show. We've had some success in reaching celebrities and nationally recognized folks in the automotive field, and uh, we could use your help playing the networking game to reach out to more luminaries across the board and see who might be able to come on the show and have fun with us for a few minutes at a time. Uh, so if you can help us with those introductions, we'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, we also simply like your suggestions for the show. As we take this break, we're thinking about organizing road trips and turning those road trips into podcast fodder. And of course, going to more car shows as it becomes safe to go do that kind of thing. The, the trick is, of course, how do we add the visual component to the car shows? Because I imagine it's kind of boring just to sit around and talk about a car that you can't see. So we're always, as you know, looking for an angle on how to get a video presence to parallel what we do with the audio show. Uh, speaking of video presence, we are now on YouTube. You can catch our old episodes on a YouTube channel. Just search for The Thing About Cars on YouTube. And your ratings and comments there would do a great deal to drive more traffic our way. We would greatly appreciate it if you would do that. If just uh, add a like or a comment to those old episodes. Tell us which ones are your favorites. We are going to do a frame off overhaul on the website. We're actually going to take the thing apart and put it back together again. The website as it exists is of course a, something of a work of art, but it was our first website and we all went a little overboard with it. So we're going to dial things back a bit, make it more functional. If there's a feature that you think would be useful to have on the website, or if you have some suggestions on how to go about putting the new one together, Please drop us a line and let us know. Our email address is thethingaboutcars at gmail.com, or you can reach us via our Facebook page. Just go to Facebook and search for The Thing About Cars, and you'll find us there. As always, wherever you listen to The Thing About Cars podcast, please leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or wherever you can leave a rating. Stitcher, for instance, uh, your ratings help us get more visible. We would love to figure out how to get featured by Apple Podcasts. And as far as any of us can tell, getting featured by Apple Podcasts uh, will only happen if more people are rating us and letting the world know what you think about the show. If you have a four or five star review, we'd love to hear about it. If you have a one or two star review, please email me about it first. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, we always appreciate you listening. We are grateful to have you along for the journey, and we hope you're having fun with us. We value your support via Patreon. It's patreon.com slash the thing about cars is a good way just to let us have a buck a month or maybe five bucks a month if you're feeling generous. And that helps defray some of our hosting costs and maybe even pay for some new software for us to use as we continue to take the thing about cars to more heights. We are also thinking now that our numbers have improved sufficiently enough. It might be time to start looking for sponsorships to add to that. We don't think we're going to find revenue streams out there that are going to make us be able to quit our day jobs, although that would be a nice dream come true. But to get a little bit more gear and find a way to uh, maybe facilitate activities for the rest of the gang, uh, we would like to try to figure that out and work in partnership with some retailers out there to help them reach their audience and to help us reach uh, more of our goals with the podcast. So again, thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of the Thing About Cars family. I'm going to leave you here with a, a clip, a recording that one of our friends made about the worst car she ever owned. Hopefully you'll think it's funny. We'll certainly be taking this one apart in a future episode of the Thing About Cars. Thanks again. We will see you on the road. I'm going to talk about the worst car that I have ever driven. A car so bad that anyone I have ever met in the car industry has laughed hysterically when they find out that I drove this car at one point in time, which is the Chrysler LeBaron convertible. This car was beyond bad. I had at least three starters put in this car. I'm pretty sure I had to have the transmission replaced at least twice. I've definitely had to have the air conditioner replaced. The internal computer system went on the fritz at least two, maybe three times. The radio quit working, the air conditioner quit working. Anything that could go wrong with this car definitely went wrong. And if you know about the Chrysler LeBaron, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. I had a fire at some point in time. This was somewhere around 1995, and I was driving home from a 4th of July party, and I was cruising down I-20, probably going about 80 miles an hour without a care in the world. Pulled up to my apartment, my neighbors were outside having a good time, 
I park, I crack open a beer, and I join them. Suddenly, they're like, hey, Amy, I think there's smoke coming from your car. So I'm grumble, 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 kicking the cement, walking over to my car. This stupid car. I can't believe this car. Everything goes wrong with this car. And I pop the hood and flames start shooting out from underneath the hood. Turns out that my fuel injectors had been leaking. So my car had been basically on fire the entire time and I didn't know it. Those were good times. Shockingly, the insurance company did not total my vehicle. So about six months later and an exorbitant amount of money, I had my car back. This car really was the car equivalent of the house in the movie, The Money Pit. It took every last dime I had. It was ridiculous. It got broken into living in Midtown and they dislodged the steering wheel shaft and my boyfriend, subsequently husband, now ex-husband, who was a car repair guy, fixed it for me. Kudos. But some wires got crossed somewhere. So every now and then my car wouldn't start. And then I'm grumble, 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 going to pop the hood to look under the hood not even knowing what I'm going to look at or what I'm checking. And it turns out that pulling the hood release lever somehow reconnected the wires that needed to be connected to start my car. So that was a neat little trick that I learned about my vehicle to turn the key, pop the hood at the same time, and that would start my car. Good times. Definitely got broken into a few times in Midtown. Doors are always unlocked. Doesn't stop people from slicing the top. Then I've got a nice gaping hole in the roof of my car that's flapping in the wind as I'm driving around. It had an alarm system that had been installed by the previous owner that randomly decided to start going off all the time even when I was driving down the road. The siren would just be randomly going off. So I took it to a shop and asked them to disconnect the alarm and they basically cut the wires to the speaker, but they did not disconnect the alarm like internally. So, you know, you're driving home from drinks and little five points at two o'clock in the morning and suddenly, out of nowhere, your headlights, your brake lights, your running lights, and any other light on your car just starts flashing. Those are good times. That's about all I can say about the Chrysler LeBaron convertible. Calling it a lemon would actually be saying something nice about it. Thank you for listening. This has been The Thing About Cars. We'll see you on the road.